in the circular flow of funds the concept is explained where we see that um, how the income is generated how the income is generated and um, how is it consumed so we see there are households here um, and then firms households um, people from the households work for the firms so firms in turn produce goods and services and um, these goods and services are consumed see when uh, people from the households work for the firms they earn their uh, share of income and uh, firms in turn now because of their uh, labor they would be able to produce goods and services and these goods and services have to be consumed by the people from the household so they have to be consumed by the household so when they consume they are spending their income to purchase the goods and services so the firms in turn get income they earn okay that income um, is again used to make the wage payment to the household uh, to the workers so this is a cycle which goes on it's a circular flow now the definition also talks about equilibrium national income is where the level of income in the circular flow is constant now if this is all the scenario which is there so it would be there within the circle okay it uh, is constant with no tendency to rise and fall now here income and expenditure will be equal but if something from external sources they, they are either injected or from this the something withdrawn so what happens when there are withdrawals and injections when there are withdrawals it says that a withdrawal in the circuit flow is any income received that is not passed on um in further spending so we have withdrawals as instead of the household spending on the goods and services if they set aside some amount so from this circle there is a portion with the, which is taken out of that so that's withdrawal then we see any amount of tax which is paid on the income generated so that will go out of this as tax payment if there are imports so we see that something uh, is um, imported from other sources so when that material comes so the income whatever is available here it is used to make payment to outsiders so that is imports and similarly anything which is injected into the circle like uh, additional investment which is in invested into the circle investments government also spend something government spending and uh, out of the goods and services that are produced here they are taken out so that the income that is generated out of exports is injected into the circuit now then we have calculated about uh, what is the um, growth in, in income growth in income happens um, is um, growth in income results in growth in investment so because of investment because of additional investment additional growth uh, in the income happens and then that um, multiplied into an accelerator so here that multiplier is given as 1 by um, marginal propensity to saving so how much do they set aside and how much do they consume so considering that taking that aspect of multiplier multiplying that into um, the change in the income uh, the change in the investment then that will be resulting in the change in the income so that's the equation which is given this is the concept of circular flow of fund we have done the other day but quick review about that um moving ahead we talk about what is aggregate demand and aggregate supply so what's aggregate demand it says aggregate demand is equal to total demand for goods and services in the economy so the total demand um, for the goods and services in the economy the aggregate demand um, the aggregate talks about um, the total total of what what aspects we have c we have i we have g then x minus m 
X is uh, exports, M is imports. C would represent the consumption of goods and services. Then uh, the total demand will be the aggregate of all the goods that are uh, produced, how much are consumed by the people in the economy. I talks about what C investment. So to the extent of investment, the production also happens and then uh, to that extent, the consumption also takes place. So investment will create that demand. If there is somebody to produce that, then there would be a requirement arising that there would be consumption happening. So C is consumption, I is investment, G is government um, expenditure. D is government expenditure or the way government spends on um, the activity. So government expenditure also will result in creation of demand. Consumption, investment, grants, um, so sorry, government expenditure, and the difference between what was exported minus what was imported. So all these aspects added together, this will talk about what is the total demand for goods and services. Now, uh, what is aggregate supply? Supply is about the uh, willingness and ability to uh, ability of the producers to produce and then keep them available so that he can offer the goods and services to the customer customers. So the willingness and ability of producers in an economy to produce and offer for sale, goods and services. Then it says that at equilibrium, AD is equal to AS. So we, we've always seen that uh, the price equilibrium price is where the supply curve when the demand curve meet. So now here we are talking about the aggregate demand and aggregate supply. So when aggregate demand and aggregate supply meet with each other, then that is the point where the price would be the op 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 optimum at the appropriate part. So that is where the price equilibrium happens here. So if AD shifts to the right, see we see that the demand curve slopes downwards we know that so if there is a demand and that demand shifts to the right if ad shifts to the right when there is lot of spare capacity of supply high growth in output and low inflation so right side is this side when would it move to the right side when ad shifts to the right that is where from here, it is moving towards this side, right side, no? Um, AD1 to AD2, or AD1, um, see the supply, um, this is the aggregate supply. So when it is moving towards this, so what, what do we see that? There is lots of spare capacity of supply. Supply is an upward rising curve. So when the demand curve is moving from this side to the right side, we see that there is increase in the supply. There is a lot of spare capacity of supply, high growth in output and low inflation. So there is a lot of uh, supply here. Then the demand is also here. We see that it is moving uh, upwards. So that is a situation where AD shifts to the right side when whenever there is a lot of spare capacity. Now with AD, um, what happens if there is spare capacity? Spare capacity is there. Then um, unutilized capacity, spare capacity, the producer thinks about producing additional goods. When additional goods are uh, produced, then um, see as the output produced increases, it becomes cost effective. We have learned about that as well. See, uh, as the output increases, we do not see the fixed cost also increasing proportionately with that. Rather, fixed cost does not increase, so that enables the total cost to per unit to come down. So cost per unit uh, comes down, so it becomes cost effective. So when they utilize the spare capacity, additional uh, units can be produced and supplied, so supply increases. Now supply increases, but the cost is not proportionately increasing. 
so here we see that the cost part of it is not increasing so demand is shifting towards the right and uh, that is available to the uh, people see the inflation here we see that inflation is a situation where people have lot of um, disposable income with them and then they are willing to spend any price so that is not the scenario here it is about utilizing the spare capacity and then producing additional goods and supplying so the supply is increasing so demand is moving towards the right side but let's say if demand shifts to the right when there is not much spare capacity so when spare capacity is not available people do not produce additional because if they want to produce additional units in that situation if they want to use additional um, capacity add additional capacity um, beyond the maximum capacity we can see that the additional fixed cost also increase so that is not at all effective for them therefore ad um, shifts to the left side when ad shift um, if ad <coughs> sorry if ad shifts to the right when there is not much spare capacity so they would not think about producing additional uh, capacity <clears throat> then in that case see when spare capacity is not available so the fixed cost will remain the same from zero till the maximum capacity so if they are operating already at the maximum capacity there is no more spare capacity available for them See, firms can also go in for expanding beyond the maximum capacity. But once they expand beyond the maximum capacity, the new set of fixed cost will increase. So that may not become efficient, effective for them. Uh, so they do not generally consider to increase the capacity beyond the maximum capacity. So here it says that if AD shifts to the right when there is not much spare capacity of supply. low growth in output so output doesn't grow so they would not immediately think about uh, going beyond the maximum capacity for the fear of increase in the cost so the supply here the concept of supply is in that there is low growth in output low growth in output not many goods are available um, in the economy so there is scarce scarcity of output or uh, scarcity of supply supply would not be there so people compete people compete to buy those uh, cares resources so the prices rise here so that is that is how it is explained so if ad is shifting to the right there are two situations given when there is spare capacity available let's say if they are uh, operating somewhere here so there is some amount of spare capacity available if they want to utilize the spare capacity it would be only the additional variable cost which will have to be incurred so the cost is effective cost when it is effective then um here the production will increase when the production increases supply is more the uh, uh, in that aspect see the inflation part of it because people are not competing uh, to acquire these um, products or these output because the supply is already more so there is no issue or situation where the prices would rise if it is the other way around when spare capacity is not available then in that case production does not increase when it does not increase it can result in a scarcity of supply in that case the prices rise because there are um, already the uh, ad is shifted to the right side aggregate demand has already shifted to the right side then we see aggregate demand and aggregate supply um, if as as is in situations now where as shifts to the right side as is this is as the supply curve so the supply curve is upward rising so when it is upward rising and from this it is shifting towards the right side so right side let's say um, figure it out this one see the the demand this is the demand curve the aggregate demand and the aggregate supply wherever they meet that will be the price equilibrium but if the supply is uh, moving towards the right side 
So if the supply moves, let's say AS1 is the supply curve. So from AS1, if it is moving to the right side, so let's look at AS3. If it is moving to the right side, then what, what do we see? What is happening on the output side? The output part of it, it see, we see that the output here, from here it is increasing. See, um, it meets the demand curve at this point. See, otherwise it was Y1 was the output. Now it is Y3 is the output. See, the output is increasing, higher output. When output increases, now um, the prices will, when the demand increases, the price, see, for, uh, the price otherwise was at uh, P1. Now the price fell to P3. So when A shifts to the right, higher output, output is increasing. Because the output is increasing, the price is reducing. When it shifts to the left side, then in that case, the output uh, is reduced, lower output and lower output and that results in the price is higher. Okay, so that is the uh, way in which uh, aggregate demand and aggregate supply meet with each other and we can decide on what is the equilibrium price. <clears throat> the chapter title here is the domestic economy. So there are various aspects of the domestic economy which we have to look into. We have uh, understood about uh, the circular flow of fund, um, aggregate demand and supply. So there are certain policy options we will be looking into. We will understand about inflation, various uh, trade cycles, that part. Uh, so let's start with what are policy changes. So see, a, a, any economy, so the government aims at uh, econ economic development. There are certain policies made by each government. So uh, the main objectives of econ economic policy, what what aspects are considered? So what is what are the areas where the government actually works? So it puts in some efforts to bring about the economic development in an economy. So the objectives here include full employment, that's one thing. Second is price stability, the avoidance of inflation. So prices they fluctuate too much then that can uh, create some kind of an um, a disturbance in the economy therefore the prices as far as possible they should be stable if there's too much of fluctuation in the prices then this the trade cycles also get affected so we can see that the um, the inflation or the stagflation or other things happen in the economy so that is not advisable for any any economy um so another important aspect is about taking care of or uh, keeping the prices stable or efforts to put the uh, prices at stable values then the overall economic growth the economy has to grow year after year then equilibrium on the balance of payment so whatever they have imported and whatever they have exported. So there should be so the reserves that are available to make the payment uh, should be sufficient. The amounts that are collected from um, exporting their goods. So there should be some balance of payments, equilibrium on the balance of payments. Then there is an acceptable distribution of income. Um, see, but garments may differ over which objectives are the more, um, see not all of them, may not be uh, at all of them may not be addressed at the same time so one by one see, we will be looking into uh, one by one each of them the policies that are taken up by the government so first we see what is the monetary policy and then we will talk about the fiscal policy then um, taxation direct and indirect unemployment inflation and various uh, other trade cycles, uh, different stages in the economy and what is the response. 
So that is uh, what we will cover. Time permits, we will also look into the interest rate. So the first one is about the monetary policy. So what does monetary policy basically take care of? Monetary policy is conducted by the central uh, bank. This policy, so what is it basically made up of? This policy is designed to alter the level of aggregate monetary demand. in the economy. So to make some changes in the total demand for money, aggregate monetary demand, it does so by influencing either the availability of money and credit or the price of credit, the rate of interest. So certain uh, actions are taken by the government to ensure that there is um, a, the desirable amount of money circulated in the economy. So they can take certain uh, actions wherein they can, they would be able to restrict the amount of money that is available. So if they increase the rate of interest, not many would be interested to uh, take borrow loans uh, because of the rise of interest. So they can cut down on the availability of funds. So there are certain ways in which the government can think about uh, uh, how to restrict the availability of money. Or sometimes they also intend, intentionally make the money flow or pump the money into the economy by reducing the interest rates or uh, encouraging firms to take up productivity activities, etc. So there are various ways in which the government, uh, the um, government takes up uh, measures to make either uh, money available or they also can restrict the availability of money in the economy. It does so by influencing either the availability of money and credit or the price of the credit, the rate of interest. Um, the Bank of in England, since this is all SEMA material is all UK material, therefore here it is referred to as the Bank of England. But for us, we generally study it as uh, RBI, that's our central bank. The central bank has independent authority to alter interest rates in pursuit of an inflation target. Currently, 2% rise in prices per year. Okay. Then we see the next policy after monetary policy. It is the um, physical policy. The fiscal policy is conducted by the central government, usually the Treasury or Ministry of Finance. So it is designed to alter the level of aggregate monetary demand in the economy. It does this by changing the balance between government taxation revenue, government expenditure. Fiscal policy also involves taxation policy. The level and structure of taxes. Then if taxation expenditure if taxation is less than expenditure the government is running a budget deficit so it collects revenue by levying taxes on various things. So we see there are direct taxes taxes collected from the person who is liable to pay on the income generated direct tax or uh, the person who is not liable to pay but from some other indirect source if the uh, tax is collected that, that becomes an indirect tax. So that becomes a source of revenue for the government. So then it collects revenue and these, this revenue we keep uh, listening. We are the taxpayers. We spend on that we pay the amount and then this amount is misused by the government or we see certain comments also coming up. So the main source of revenue, there are other ways also, but the main source of revenue for the government, we see it is the um, tax revenue. This tax revenue is spent on various welfare activities, various projects taken up by the government on government expenditure. So if the revenue is less than expenditure, the government is running a um, deficit budget. A deficit is financed by government borrowing known as the public sector net, net cash requirement. Public sector net cash requirement. 
so now governments also require funds see we, when when there is a deficit then in that case what do what does the government do so government also has to uh, pull up funds in case uh, in uh, so as to um cover the deficit uh, that is that has arisen because of um revenue being less than the expenditure so that's the fiscal policy then uh, what are the sources of taxation taxation is basically a direct tax and an indirect tax what's a direct tax a direct tax is one a direct tax is one where the burden falls on the person who's legally liable to pay the tax then uh, a progressive tax is one where the proportionate of income paid in taxes rises or falls as income rises so that is a direct tax whoever is legally liable to pay the tax because of the uh, increase in the income it's called as direct tax so we see that the main direct taxes are income tax the national insurance Sec na uh, social security contributions corporation tax inherent inheritance tax that's property tax what we know it as capital gains taxes then direct taxes tend to be progressive in, in impact to involve dis disincentive uh, effects to work and efforts what is an indirect tax an indirect tax is one where the burden of tax will be partly passed on to someone other than the person who is liable to be paid so when the responsibility of paying the tax is passed on to someone else then we call that as an indirect tax the sources of indirect taxes are vat value added tax um, of late so that's the point of discussion how vat was uh, added uh, then we see excise duties customs duties and then indirect taxes tend to be highest on goods with low price elasticity even the price elasticity is not there there is no impact seen on the demand because of change in prices that is low price elasticity of demand such as petrol tobacco alcohol even when the prices rise also we do not see an immediate impact or there is an impact on the quantity demanded even if the prices rise for petrol also people still continue to use the petrol as it is so there is it doesn't get affected so there's no elasticity in case of certain products the examples are petrol people using tobacco or alcohol even if the price ch changes also the demand doesn't fall it is the same so in that case we see that uh, the indirect taxes year after year every budget they tend to increase only on these things there is um, so petrol there is no waiting till the budget period it increases as and when the government wants to increase so that is how it happens we see that tobacco alcohol also um, we see that very frequently i mean uh, at least annually once it, it is increased so the taxes increase because uh, by increasing the prices there is no impact seen on the demand therefore that is one very comfortable way of earning revenue for the government to be regressive in impact to involve involve weaker disincentive effects than direct taxes okay um, that is the main source of revenue for the government and by collecting this tax amount from the tax payers the direct tax and the indirect tax government takes up certain welfare activities or measures um, to bring about economic development to ensure that there is growth in the economy then another aspect of where the government works or one point about the policy choices is to look into the employment part of it to ensure that everybody in the economy has full employment so what about the unemployment what are the different types of unemployment so the real wages the when the wages do not include the change in the price rise the inflation part of it the impact of the inflation is not covered by the wages that are paid okay then uh, seasonally some of them are unemployed then we see frictional um, then structural uh, technical cyclical that is demand efficient so different uh, 
um, types of unemployment uh, one second Okay. We're talking about unemployment, um, there are different types of unemployment. Um, we see that um, there are uh, uh, real wages, um, seasonal uh, unemployment. See, they have only worked during seasons. The other seasons, they do not have work so there are they are unemployed in off seasons during only during the seasons only they find work um frictional when they um frequently uh, change the jobs when they shift from one job to another job so any kind of an unemployment that arises uh, during the periods when they are shifting their um jobs so that that is that can be referred to as uh, frictional unemployment. So after frictional unemployment, we see structural um, structural unemployment or uh, technical. Um, see how do we explain about the uh, structure structural unemployment? See. See the work requires a particular. Uh, structure or uh, set of skills that are required so that the work can be carried out. We see that the nature of work also undergoes many changes. So from time to time, there are changes brought about because the, the techniques change, the methods change, the way in which the activities carried on changes. See, one were the days when most of the work was done manually. Now it is not done manually. Wherever possible, we see that uh, machines are introduced, automation is there, we see robots are used to be placed that every area almost we can see that uh, automation mechanization is happening. So now there is a change, there is a shift in the kind of skills that are needed. So um, whenever there is a change in the structure or the skill set or because of technical uh, changes that happen, if there is, um, uh, if the people are not uh, employed because they do not possess those skills or 
they are not equipped with the required skills then they are unemployed there so structural or technical unemployment then we see cyclical um, during the cycle um, of the economy trade cycles of the economy if there is any kind of an unemployment now this unemployment key nations um, law of unemployment so here he talks about um, demand for labor unemployment is due to insufficient demand for labor due to insufficient demand for the goods and services people produce so when the productivity activity is not carried on when there is no productivity activity see people uh, are the ones who are uh, contributing their labor to produce the goods and services so when the goods and services itself are not produced people would not be required to produce them so when they are not required when there is no demand for their labor then we see that unemployment arises see it is because of uh, insufficient demand people do not demand these goods and services so if there because there is insufficient demand for goods and services therefore people are also not wanted to produce these goods and services on that note we see that there is insufficient demand for labor as well so when there is insufficient demand for labor then we see that unemployment arises okay so the solution is to boost aggregate demand so when the aggregate demand increases the output or produced also increases when the demand shifts towards the right side then the output increases when the output increases automatically more workers are needed labor are needed so the uh, unemployment problem can be resolved so the solution talks about to boost the aggregate demand in the economy monetarist view of supply of labor so there is um, to deal with the unemployment the explanation about unemployment it says that the economy will automatically create jobs as it moves to its perfect equilibrium the problem is not a lack of jobs unemployment arises because people are unable or unwilling to get the jobs that exist that also we see sometimes see um, there are economies where jobs are available but people are not willing to so then they start importing the um, expertise or skills and then uh, see some of the developed countries we see that people are there people are also unemployed but other um, the experts or the skilled people from other uh, move to th those countries because they are willing to work and then um, um, maybe at a lower rate when what the localites demand so that is another situation there See, the problem is not lack of jobs jobs would be there people are also there but because the unwillingness of the people present there uh, to work then we see that um, that unemployment arises unemployment arises because people are unable or unwilling to get the jobs that exist if unwilling then the solution is to cut benefits increase the difficulty of claiming benefit and reduce tax levels to eliminate the poverty gap how do they um, resolve this issue so the solution talks about is to cut benefits benefits extended by the government to the people see um, when government is supporting the unemployed providing certain benefits to the people people become lazy in that economy so they stop working so then they exhibit that un unwillingness to work so when the benefits are cut down then people start working very hard they take up any kind of a job that comes their way so when the solution is to cut benefits increase the difficulty of claiming benefits only when they work they can uh, um, they can be entitled to receive the benefit if that is what is the situation the um, the difficulty of claiming benefit and reduce tax levels to eliminate the poverty gap so that is how um, the activity can be boosted up in an economy so when the activity increases automatically the unemployment problem also resolves so deal with these uh, those unable to get jobs the solution will involve <clears throat> unwillingness uh, is uh, uh, resolved by removing the difficulty uh, removing the benefits or 
um, cutting down on the benefits and then uh, only when they work they will, they will be entitled to receive the benefit etc some kind of measures when they are taken so that unwillingness can also be resolved now if um, if they are not uh, able an uh, inability so if that is the situation people who are unable to do that to so provide better training so that they become equipped or skilled and then they can take it up so to deal with those unable to get jobs the solution will involve retraining schemes to provide additional sometimes we see during summer vacation some vocational courses some value added courses are provided by government um from uh, time to time from in different places government uh, takes up certain measures or uh, provide certain training camp free, uh, camps free of cost um, um, at very low cost certain kind of trainings are provided etc um okay um will involve retraining schemes legislation against discrimination outlawing uh, closed shop arrangements provision of better information relocation assistance so some kind of um, measures that are taken so that the people are equipped well people learn the skills people are provided training then um, any kind of an um, assistance from the government and if they provide people are ready to take up the jobs and then the unemployment can be problem can be resolved so monetarist also see the need to reduce union power to reduce real wage in unemployment so real wage uh, um, issue arises because um, see the when the wage uh, the wage that is uh, paid by the um, firm if they feel that it is not sufficient enough to cover the rise in the prices then they stop working they take the help of the uh, trade unions and then um, they, they are willing to be unemployed rather than work for such low wages so there is an effort there is a strike which goes on to for the rise in the wages to they demand for rise in the wages etc so that is what actually happens when the real wage issue arises so to resolve that reduce the impact of the union power um to reduce real wage unemployment so whenever there there is a protest whenever there is a strike on, uh, on behalf of the employees or the workers um to increase the wages then in that case if the trade union power can be reduced i think the unemployment that arises because of the real wage issue also can be resolved so that is about the a monetarist view of unemployment key nation also talks about uh, um, how to resolve the unemployment that is by increasing the aggregate demand when there is an increase in the demand um, demand for the goods and services then automatically there would be an increase in the demand for the labor as well so then the problem of unemployment can be resolved then we talk about what is inflation now how do we uh, look into the concept of inflation inflation is a situation where uh, there is lot of disposable income in the hands of the people so they are willing to pay a higher price for the product so when that uh, willingness to pay the higher prices happens then that can result in the uh, rise in the prices and the prices increase um, when the prices increase then um, the income which was earlier available with the people is not sufficient enough for them to buy the products goods and services so that scenario that situation is about inflation so demand pull monetarist view what is the cause according to this one what is the cause see the cause of inflation is excessive growth in the money supply this lot of money supply available in the hands of the people the uh, increase in the disposable income in the hands of the people so the policy control the growth of money supply to mask the growth of the economy so when that is cut down when there is some uh, restriction brought about as to how much money is flown into the or it flows into the uh, economy or the, into the hands of the people if that can be restricted if that can be controlled i think the inflation can be cut down um, so cutting g to avoid g is what g is government expenditure 
So government, when it spends the productivity activity happens, when the productivity increases, boosts and our, um, I mean, the supply is uh, high. Now here, um, when the supply is high, then people uh, earn more amount of income, then there is additional income in the hands of them. Then that results in um, their willingness to pay higher prices and then that willingness to pay higher prices ultimately results in inflation, rise in prices. Then again, those rise in prices will not be, um, will not enable the people to uh, spend properly. So that, that is the situation. So if the government expenditure is cut down on the uh, productive activity, so cutting government expenditure to avoid having to print money or borrow, increasing interest rates, when the interest rates increase, people um, um, stop borrowing because of the increase in the cost of interest. So when they stop borrowing, the activity, productivity activity also cuts, uh, is uh, cut down uh, to that extent. So when the productivity activity doesn't happen, the supply also is limited, then uh, that is how things can be controlled in the economy. So increasing the interest rate is one one way. So the open market um, operations of the uh, central bank, so the way they take decisions about how, uh, when to increase the rate uh, of interest, when to decrease the rate of interest. So how much cash reserves uh, should the bank maintain? How much can they uh, utilize to extend as loans? Um, how is the credit created, etc.? Certain measures that are taken by the central bank also will decide on what is the supply of money into the economy. So then when they cut down on the supply of money, I think the problem of inflation can be resolved. So how to measure the money supply? The problems are how to measure how much money supply is there present in the economy is one um, problem of um, the ways in which the inflation can be cut down, coping with the adverse consequences of high interest rates. When the interest rates increase, see, this, this is all a cycle which goes into. When the interest rate increases, the productivity activity reduces. When the productivity activity reduces, automatically it will result in a decrease in the demand for the labor as well. So, which is that, that is how unemployment is created. So, that is all. Um, that is that all goes into a cycle. Okay, so that is what we see here: unemployment, etc. Then we see um, the Keynesian view of uh, inflation. That is demandful Keynesian view of inflation. Uh, inflation arises. The root cause of it is the excessive demand when there is lot of. Uh, the total consumption of goods and services increases when there is excessive demand. That is when the inflation rises. So what is the policy? Policy is to reduce the aggregate demand. So the excessive aggregate demand, wherein more activity happens, there is more output that is produced, that more output will produce will result in more consumption. So people start buying these products. So that when people start buying more and more goods, then that can result in increase in the prices. So the policy is to reduce aggregate demand, cutting down on the um, government expenditure and increasing the uh, taxation. Then uh, cost push. Um, see, there's another view about cost push. Uh, causes, cost factors such as high union power, oil prices, imported raw materials when they rise, then that can result in uh, inflation. So these are uh, main things which rise. We see that once the oil price rises, other factors also rise. We see imported raw material. Raw material cost increases, the cost of production increases, the sale price increases, the prices rise. So we see that there are certain factors, cost factors when they increase, that can result in inflation happening. The policy is uh, uh, prices and incomes policy. So cut down on the prices and um, um, and incomes policy. 
if they adopt that, then I think the inflation problem can be resolved. In the domestic economy, we also see that um, there are various stages in the trade cycles of the economy. We see recession, stagflation, a recovery, and boom. So, what happens um, during recession? During recession, what are the main features? The main features during recession we can see falling output income. So the income is, uh, the output is not there, the output is decreasing and therefore the income also is reducing. See that is all connected when output increases, the demand for uh, labor also increases, the income of the people also increases. But when there is no output, no activity carried on, the activity is reduced, the demand for the labor also reduces, the income that is, uh, generated by the workers also reduces. So falling output and falling income. Then we see high and rising unemployment. Okay, that is one reason. So people do not have work, high and rising unemployment. So they do not have work and they do not have uh, income. Then the output also is reduced. So the demand um, for this the scarce output increases price increases, then um, reduced inflatory pressure, um, improving trade balance as imports fall. If the imports fall, the balance between what is imported and what is exported, so there should be, that is what we were talking about balance of payments. So there should be a balance as to how much they are importing and how much they are exporting. So when they, whenever they import, they pay um, for those imported goods in the due by use of foreign reserves. And uh, when they export, they receive, um, they receive for these exports in foreign reserves. So, there should be a balance between what is imported and what is exported. So improving trade balance as imports fall, public finance will be adversely affected due to reduced tax income and increased benefit payments. Okay, so these are the features. The causes for that, what, what happens, I mean, what's the root cause? What happens during recession is features. What are the causes of recession? Um, until now we've already discussed falling domestic aggregate demand from lower levels of consumer spending, investment, exports, government expenditure. So when there is a decrease in these aspects, then there would be a recession in the economy. Then again, we can also see that extending to the entire world, world recession. So many times, we see that recession happening in one place, slowly catching up on um, by the others also. It also extends to other places as well. So world recession is what happened. So what is the response to such a situation? What's the policy response to such a situation? We see that raise um, aggregate demand, activity increases, output increases, people also find uh, um, employment, their income levels increase. So, raise the aggregate demand by reducing taxation. The ways in which the aggregate demand can be increased, it says that by reducing taxation, raising public expenditure, um, lowering interest rates. So, encouraging people to take up uh, productive activity. So, one way is uh, motivate people to earn more. If the tax rates are reduced, so there would be more available income with the, with the hands of the people. Reduced taxes, taxation, uh, raising public expenditure, uh, spend more on uh, productive activities, lowering interest rates. Then uh, sellers, manufacturers also come forward to borrow money because they are available at reasonable rates. 
the productivity activity increases, aggregate demand increases. Okay. Then we see starflation. What is starflation? Falling output, uh, income, um, rising unemployment, rising inflatory pressure. So these are the features that happen during starflation. We see here as well in this situation, in this uh, stage also, the output is falling, income is falling because of which the unemployment is rising. And then there are um, other inflatory pressures rising. The root cause of that, supply side. Supply side shocks reducing aggregate supply. So the aggregate supply is reduced. When the aggregate supply reduces, it moves towards the When the aggregate supply reduces, it moves towards the left side. If the aggregate supply shifts towards the left side, in that case, what is happening? When the aggregate supply is moving towards the left side, there is a change in the price. Price moves from P1 to P2. The price rises. Okay. So, The root cause is um, the way the aggregate supply uh, shifts. Low aggregate demand combined with cost to push inflation. So these are the root causes. Um, because the aggregate demand along with the aggregate supply, when the aggregate supply is shifting towards the left side, see the prices are rising. Here, one more factor is that there is a reduction in the aggregate demand. See, that is causing many other problems like output is reducing. Um, see, the prices um, also get affected. Um, we see aggregate demand falling and then income is not available with people, etc. So, these are the root causes. How to deal with these things? What's the policy response? The policy response talks about supply side policy to raise aggregate supply. When aggregate supply moves towards the right side and then the output increases, then we also see that the price also reduces. So that is how the situation can be handled. Then uh, we talk about the recovery stage, recovery from um, the recession, the stagflation. Then uh, when the economy recovers, so when the economy recovers, it says output and income begin to rise. Then uh, unemployment begins to fall. Activity increases in the economy. Output increases, production increases people find work, then their income levels increase. Only moderate inflationary pressures improving public finances. Okay, so the government also starts spending um, on uh, productive activities. So improving uh, um, so government spending would, would be there, improving public finances. Um, more funds are available for the productive activity, etc. Uh, the causes are returning confidence in business and consumer sectors, effect of government expansionary policy undertaken in recession. So, to cut down the recession, whatever actions which are taken by the government can boost up some confidence among the business and uh, consumer sectors. So, activity once again picks up and we can see that the economy starts recovering from these adverse situations of recession and stagflation. See, the policy is to reduce reduction in expansionary policy to prevent too strong a move. That also has to be taken up. 
then we see the fourth stage is in the trade cycles is boom what happens in boom here in case of boom we see high output and unemployment uh, high output and employment uh, rising inflationary pressures deteriorating trade balance as import rises so um, more activity happens so when more activity happens there is requirement for additional material so more imports happen so that will impact their foreign reserves in terms of making payment um, so that can affect the balance of payment deteriorating trade balance higher net income of a government allows the repayment of uh, debt what are the causes for a boom to happen the boom is high and the rising aggregate demand activity is at its peak that is when it is boom um, high and rising ag aggregate demand from higher levels of consumer spending investment export government expenditure so what policy has to be taken up by the government to in situation of boom reduce um, aggregate demand by raising taxation so certain measures where in the productivity activity can be curbed down so that is um, that would be about the policy response reduce aggregate demand by raising taxation reducing public expenditure higher interest rate etc you are there <laughs> so boring afternoon time we are learning let's try yeah, um, <laughs> so uh, sometimes we'll do certain questions then we'll come back to interest rate management um, remember what was the last question we've done I I think it was seventy-seven. We had to start from macro, I guess. Macro. Macro economic and something we finished. Yeah. Did we answer or something in between? We left like this one or two. Let's proceed further. A lot of time is there. Um, Class is still twentieth uh, or something, no? Or yes, ma'am. Comfortably ten to twelve days, we will be having classes. Tomorrow we don't have a class. Saturday, Sundays we don't have. Monday again we meet. Seventy-eight question number. Which of the following are included in aggregate demand? Indicate your answer by ticking. Consumption will be included. Okay, C is there. Uh, yeah, and income will not be included.
included? Yes, and income and savings both will not be included. Again, investment will be included. And the future is included. What else is included? Oh, investment will be included. Investment is included. Income? No. Not included. Savings? Savings also not included. Uh, left for shift in the supply curve, moving to the left side, when while demand is unchanged, could lead to which of the following? And rising prices and lower output. Okay. So the question is addressing about um, the supply curve shifting towards the left side. So when the supply curve shifts towards the left side, what is happening to the price? Price part of it is increasing. So when the price increases and what is the next thing? The um, output part also is given. See output otherwise here at AS1 it was Y1. Output is also reducing. See output is reducing, the price is increasing. Prices are rising, so between A and B only. Anyway, C and D is not the situation. What is happening to output? Output is slower. Consider the following information. Exports are their interest, investment, savings, government expenditure, imports, taxes. The national income for this economy will be national income. Um, See, it is about um, what are the elements which are to be taken into consideration. The answers are given as start to fall, start to rise, remain static, be in equilibrium. So we see uh, exports is um, X, investment is I, savings is propensity to save, then government expenditure is G, imports is uh, M, taxes is T. So let's quickly look at um, the equation, um, whatever is consumed. And the future part of it is not talking about. See, the income in the economy, uh, if we talk about the circular flow of funds, we see there are certain withdrawals and certain uh, injections. So the items that are given here, we have to categorize them as whether they are withdrawals or whether they are in injections. So savings, taxation, and imports are, we have them as um, withdrawals. So let's first uh, identify them as Export is a withdrawal or an um, injection. So injections are VC investment, government expenditure and exports. So this can be talked about, um, I'll write it here. If this is exports is a withdrawal. Investment is additional amount. So it is an injection. 
savings is a withdrawal. They are not allowing it to be um, government expenditure. What is government expenditure? Ma'am, government is this, uh, exports also it's injection only, right? Like, exports is an injection. Yeah. It's given that injections in the circle of flows, investment, governments, and exports. What is government expenditure? The government is injecting, isn't it? Exports are withdrawals. Are you able to see the screen? Yes, ma'am. I'm able to see. Imports will be a withdrawal. Taxes will be a withdrawal. Check how much is injection, how much is um, withdrawals. So, 1010 injections and 977 withdrawals. Nine. So injections so, are more. Yeah, so there is uh, more that. amount injected into the circular flow. So when there are more injections, there's more activity that happens. When there is more activity, the uh, aggregate demand also increases. The uh, people in the economy have employment then they start earning more income. So here in this case, um, the national income of this economy start to follow. There is more in, you know, more amount which is injected into the economy. So more activity, more will be the income. So the income level will rise. So it is not, it doesn't remain static or it is not in equilibrium. It doesn't fall or it increases, so that that will start to rise. The figures below show the consumption function for a given economy. We see income and consumption. Okay, the value of MPC, marginal propensity to consumption in this economy is. So what is marginal propensity to consumption? So we have incomes given, we have also the consumptions given. slide we don't have uh, we just have the um, um, you write um, if you can check it from the marginal propensity to Consumption MPS. I will just uh, put you to that formula from the study text, I guess. It was there in the slide. Uh -huh. It was changed. I think it was there in the slide also. No, no, no. no. The way we calculate the impact is there, but the way we calculate marginal. Marginal propensity to consumption is equal to change in consumption delta C by change in income delta Y. So let's make a note of that. Change in delta C by delta Y is MPC.
MPC is equal to delta C by delta phi. Um, there is a pattern of change in the um, data given. Yes, the consumption increases. In everything, consumption is increasing by 15. The pattern and... is. Um, we see 100 to 120, then 120 to 140. Yeah, 120. Every time there is an increase by 20. So 20, when the yes. income is increasing by 20, what is the increase in the consumption? It is 95 to 110, then 110 to, so here it is 15, then here it is 15, so 15, 15. Consumption is increasing by 15. So we have by 20. 15, no? Uh, so this is 15, yeah, yeah, consumption is 15. And the change in income is by 20. So MPC, the value of MPC in this economy is? It will be uh, 0 0.75. 0.75. Closed economy with no government sector has a marginal propensity to consume 0 0.8 and a full employment level of 100 million. The current level of national income is 80 million. To achieve full employment, investment must rise by. So MPC is equal to 0 0.8. Full employment uh, is 100 million. The current level of national income is 80 million. What is MPS? MPS is 1 by 1 minus MPC. So this is 0 0.8. We will just go to the uh, PPT to understand. The question is asking us, see, full employment happens at, see, employment happens at 100 million. So now that is what they have to achieve at 100 million. But as of now, the current income level, income is delta Y, delta Y is only at 80. So now, if the investment has to increase, investment is delta I. This is delta Y is equal to 80. We want to know what additional investment, change in the investment, delta I. So what is delta I? We'll just quickly look at the PPT. See, what is the increase in the income is subject to increase in investment into the multiplier. So how much would be the increase in investment is increase in the income divided by the multiplier. But what is the multiplier? Multiplier is 1 by MPS, propensity to saving. Propensity to saving can be, uh, uh, the multiplier could be 1 by MPS or 1, min, 1 by 1 minus MPC. So take the multiplier. Multiplier is multiplied into the investment. That will be increase in income. So now income right now, we see that uh, it is at 80. We, we are trying to find out what is the additional investment. Multiplier also can be calculated because we have what is MPC. So first let's find out what is the multiplier. Multiplier goes to the other side, increase or change in the investment can be calculated. That is how we can proceed further. Uh, we'll go back to the question once. Okay. Um, multiplier, let's first find out multiplier. Multiplier is equal to 1 by 1 minus 0.8. So 1 by 1.2. It will be 5. 
मल्टीप्लायर इज फाइव the employment is at 100 and uh, but they want to have i mean the full employment happens at 100 right now the income vc is at 80 so if it is 80 then they should have additional 20 already yeah. the income level is at 80 but uh, full employment uh, happens at 100 so additional they want 20 so the change is uh, to the extent of but delta by will be 20 so if delta y is equal to 20 delta i is equal to delta y into or what's the equation delta y is equal to delta i into multiplier 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 we already got it as five. Uh, five, yeah. Twenty divided by five will be four. So in less than two to four. Delta y is equal to delta i into multiplier. Into multiplier. We already have. Uh, this is twenty. Twenty divided by two. So delta i is equal to twenty divided by five. Okay. Four is four is the answer. Delta i is equal to twenty by four. Five. Which of the following situations would lead to a uh, lead to the existence of a deflationary gap? There has been a general fall in prices. Land expenditure exceeds the um, full employment level of output. Land expenditure is below the full employment level. The time it takes to come in this is also. So, when the land expenditure is below the full employment, the full employment level of output um, uh -huh. is what is desired. But they are not taking up the uh, activity to that extent. So the expenditure is below. So there is a mismatch between these two. There is a gap. See, when full employment level of output has to be produced, the all all possible investments from the government side, the investments have to be spent. Certain measures have to be taken up. Productivity has to be increased so that the output is increased. But it is there is a mismatch between how much they are spending and uh, what is the level of full employment of work. So then there is a deflationary gap. Which of the following groups do not lose out from inflation? Those on fixed incomes, those who have indexed linked incomes, those who hold on to cash, and those who invest in non-financial assets. Who will who will not be affected because of um, inflation or rise in prices? 
okay good morning bro see whenever okay. price, whenever prices rise see the yeah. uh, consumer price index is it, it, in, it indicates that um, the prices are rising at this particular rate so um, to compensate that rise in prices the employees are also paid certain additional allowance what we call it as uh, dns allowance da is paid that is to compensate uh, whatever is the rise in prices so along with the fixed salary employees are entitled to receive a dns allowance da okay so when their salaries are not just fixed salary fixed incomes but they have high indexed um, when they have indexed linked income so that index calculation reflects the rise in prices reflecting that the da is paid so every employee almost all organizations take care of this rise in prices to be compensated with the additional allowance additional pay which is paid as da so they they do not get affected if the prices are rising their da also uh, simultaneously rises and they do not get affected so those that with fixed incomes they will have only that income but the prices are rising so they they get affected negatively second one they do not get affected see holding on to cash is almost like equal to having a fixed income the cash cash in itself it does not increase unless and until cash is invested into some investment avenue having cash on hand is uh, absolutely unproductive so that will not rise by holding on to the cash so therefore cash is not always held but it is invested in some investment opportunity uh, any amount of cash kept in a box or cash box uh you open it after a while very long time also it still will be the same it doesn't increase with the passing of the time so that doesn't help in any way those who invest in non financial assets non financial assets so um when they how do we explain non financial assets so uh, financial assets are in the form of cash in hand cash at bank um and any kind of a liquid assets see they do not basically increase with the rise in prices but when non financial assets like property plant equipment they invest in that see they increase when the prices rise so they get benefited if they invest in financial assets like cash in hand cash at bank and then liquid assets etc they do not increase proportionately therefore they do not get benefited out of that the so people who invest in non financial assets the prices also rise so when the price when there is inflation they the non financial assets also rise so they get benefited out of that so those that have index linked incomes those that invest in non financial assets uh, do not get affected a downturn in the level of economic activity is likely to lead to which type of unemployment um see economic activity level of economic activity when there is a change in that who gets affected is it seasonal seasonal because it changes in season frictional when they are shifting from one job to another job so small employment gaps that arise are frictional structural structural because of the requirement of uh, um uh, work or the skills that are uh, changed therefore if there is any change that is called as structural cyclical because of the changes in the economic activity or cycles so now um, the answer is obviously it is d reduction in demand for coal and steel is likely to lead to which type of unemployment reduction in the demand for coal and steel like is likely to lead to which type of unemployment voluntary structural structural cyclical
it's not about voluntary frictionally short uh, uh, gaps in their employment because of shifting between jobs that is frictional structural here um, which type of unemployment it is not cyclical because there are there is no change in the level of economic activity so how do we explain the structural part of it Uh, there is reduction in the demand for coal and steel so they are not using coal and steel so there is uh, something else which is needed so all those people with those um, skill set which uh, they can use it in coal and uh, steel um, works related work um, they would not be required there okay so then there is a change in the nature of work that is happening nature of work otherwise it was related to coal and steel but now the demand for coal and steel has reduced so there are structural changes that are happening because of that all those people that are associated with um, these things uh, now will not find any job so that is an unemployment which is structural because of change in the structure uh, or the way the way uh, in the way in which the work was carried out so it is structural Eighty-seven. If the government were to pursue a contractionary monetary policy, um, contraction, so reduction, see so the reduction in the level of activity that will happen. So we see that it is about the interest rates and is one thing, and uh, sell the securities. So contraction talks about. controlling the flow of money into the economy contractionary monetary policy so to cut down to curb on the cash flows that are available in the economy so what measures are taken so it talks about uh, two aspects um, interest rates will the interest rates be increased or decreased let's first discuss upon that part of it will the interest rates be increased or decreased the so interest rates will be increased to uh, discourage people to take up more productive activity so it is definitely about raising interest rates so we can rule out the ones which are lower interest rates so b and d can be ruled out they are cut out now we are between a and c both of them have rising interest rates then if they have rising interest rates then security government also Uh, sells and buy securities from time to time their intention is there should be less amount of cash flow available or flow of money in the economy so when they sell securities people buy securities when they buy securities the money flow will move to the government it will go towards i mean it will go to the government so less some money will be available in the economy so contractionary monetary policy to cut down to curb the flow of money into the economy one thing is to discourage the productive activity when more activity more production more consumption more income more consumption now that's the cycle but now they don't want to have so much of activity to happen to cut down on the activity the interest rates will be uh, increased along with that the securities should be sold when they sell that people buy when people buy their money will flow to the government so there's less money in the economy so a is the answer here by buying it government itself is inducing money into the economy so in that case that will not be a contractionary monetary policy then we see uh the major impact of an increase in the reserve asset ratio would be reserve um they are increasing the impact of an increasing in the amount of reserves which have to be maintained by the banks reserve asset ratio would be we have push up interest rates to reduce interest rates to reduce the level of liquidity in the banking sectors to raise the level of liquidity in the banking sector see 
reserve asset ratio is uh, decided by the central bank for all the commercial banks so commercial banks when they collect deposits from multiple um, customers then these amounts are pooled up and then these amounts are used to extend loans to the producers now that is the activity that happens but they get to estimate what portion of the total deposits are withdrawn by the consumers from time to time so only one portion of it will be withdrawn entire amount is not withdrawn by the depositors at one go so uh, they generally tend to understand what portion of it will be withdrawn so they decide on what amount of balance uh, should be maintained within the bank the rest of it is extended as loans <clears throat> central uh, central bank also <clears throat> uh, makes some changes in what portion of the these deposits should be kept as a reserve they should not be used to extend loans so when they want to think about that when they want to increase the percentage of reserve cash reserve ratio uh, when they are thinking about increasing that what is that they are discouraging banks to extend more loans more loans are extended more productivity more activity etc now they don't want to have that so from four options first two is ruled out it is only about the banking sector so cnd so cnd c says to reduce the level of liquidity liquidity is the ability to um, utilize the uh, i mean of have the cash balances and utilize one portion of it is tied up now they cannot use that so they have a liquidity issue here so to raise the level of liquidity or to reduce the level of liquidity <clears throat> it would be uh, c to reduce the level of liquidity the burden of an indirect tax will fall more heavily on the consumer in which of the following situations the greater is the price elasticity of demand for the goods the lower is the price elasticity of demand for the goods the greater is the income elasticity of demand for the goods the lower is the price elasticity of supply um, the lower is the price elasticity of demand yes indirect tax will fall fall more heavily sorry sir sir will fall more heavily so there is a there is an increase in demand increase in demand um, sorry increase in the uh, indirect tax so when there is an increase in indirect tax there is no impact on certain types of goods so that can be talk, uh, talked about in elasticity so indirect taxes are generally um i mean those are the taxes which are collected from people who are not directly uh, uh, responsible for earning their income but from some other source it is collected so we see indirect taxes are levied on uh, um um some of the examples what we were looking at uh, um where there is no impact for the rise in prices we just put to you Uh, petrol was one example we were quoting then uh, tobacco and um, ha huh, so so when there is a uh, the indirect taxes tend to be highest with the low price elasticity of demand such as petrol tobacco alcohol so when it increases heavily or when the impact is seen heavily on the consumers the burden of an indirect tax will fall more heavily on the consumer if the, in the following situation when the price elasticity the price is inelastic there is no impact of the price on the uh, quantity demanded so what is the answer is it a b greater is not it is lower lower is the price elasticity so in that case uh, a and c are not the case b and d so b is the price elasticity 
of demand for the goods. The lower is the price elasticity. It's not about elasticity of supply. It is the elasticity of demand, price elasticity of demand. If the government wishes to pursue an expansionary fiscal policy, it should perform which of the following actions? Expansionary fiscal policy. Increase taxes, increase government expenditure, increase, okay. So there are two variables, one is taxes and then the other one is government expenditure. Um, they want to expand, expansionary policy. So in that case, first thing what we see is, um, Government expenditure will definitely increase because they are injecting funds into the economy to increase the activity expansion, expansionary. Government expenditure, so government expenditure would be increased. So one thing we see government expenditure increasing, government expenditure increasing. So A and C, P and D are ruled out. Now taxes, if more taxes are collected from the people, then in that case, less will be available will with the people to take up the productive activities. So it is reducing the taxes, enabling them to have more amount of income with them. So more is the productive activity and the rest of it follows. So on that note, we can go with C, not A. Anyway, B and D are ruled out. Is that clear to you? Yes, ma'am. Shall we end it here? Afternoon time. Shall we end yeah, it? Here? <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, we'll uh, again meet on Monday. We have a lot of time also till 20th. Uh, so any in any situation, we will get uh, more than 10 hours, 10 days, 10 into 2, 20 hours. Yeah, you have to be 21st month. Uh, 20, no? 20? 20th month, 21st. 